do you anticipate having a, a identified list of doctors on whom you would call? We don't call the residents have their own doctors. All right. Do you anticipate having a list that you would provide to residents? We don't provide. No, you can't medical. do that. Um, so, so we can for the residents uh, that would be at Banbury as well as in Millersville. They have a delegating nurse, um, and oftentimes because if somebody were to come from out of state, they don't have a doctor here. Mm -hmm. So, our, uh, excuse me, our nurse practitioner. Sorry. Well, we always have a delegating nurse. Our delegating nurse is the one that does 40 day, 45 day assessments. It's by law. No, uh, is, is that is that delegating nurse an employee of yours or is that a consultant that you bring in? Um, and she has to come and do uh, 45 day assessments mm -hmm. every, well, you know. Um, so our nurse practitioners, we do have two and we can recommend those to our senior residents. We cannot enforce that. We can't say, oh, we want you to use, you know, Amy or whoever. Right, I understand. I understand. So it's a, usually a. Uh, but you 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 can you can't tell somebody if they need a gastroenterologist. Look, there's this guy you might want to talk to. No, nope. and usually the families. I, I don't get involved again in any of that medical billing, medical, wherever they need, art, whatever if they need. You know, a lot of times, quite often, somebody yeah. needs to see Randy Davis. Um, so I do not get involved in that. That's not. But that's what that's what you do at Millersville. I'm asking whether there, this is what you're going to do at Banbury. I would I stick to the same. <laughs> like, okay. But my, my, my homes. I'm like, I'm not sure if there's any, my, there's, I don't think that there's going to be, but for the fact that this is a beautiful setting for anybody um, to have their end of life here uh, is any different. Okay. And, any know, different than Vanberg and any different than Millersville. David, David, the, the comparison that you are making because of a CBRE quote that was used out of an appraisal, CBRE made a comment <clears throat> that there's a section of the facility north of Manhattan that has independent care assisted living. The minute you go above 17 in most states, assisted living rooms and residents, all the regulations switch. So you need an RN, you need so many hours per month, per week of an RN, and once you get above 25, you need a doctor. So, so you're, you're, you're mixing and mashing things that are, that, that, that are simply different. Well, Craig, respectfully, let me suggest that I'm not mixing and matching things that are different. I understand what the minimum requirements are and that, they, that there is a size at which they change. And I couldn't tell you today whether it's 9 or 10 or 11, but I, I do understand that. I also understand, and what little I understand, is what's in the letter that came from your lawyer and what is an ad in the forms that implies to me as a layman that this is something beyond the legal minimum requirements for a facility with nine people. And I'm trying to go to get the information to report to the board as to how it's different. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've got a I've got a last question about about the ad, and then I think maybe we can talk about how we how we continue. And that is just this this group of people that are pictured in the ad. Are they all? I don't know your family, and, and I've lost my Zoom picture for the last hour, so I apologize. But are all the people who are pictured in this ad staff that you anticipate having at Banbury Road? Um, the picture people picture Jeanette's in the middle in the white jacket. Okay. Tyler is um, to her, as you're looking at the picture, to her left. Mm -hmm. What's that, a bluish green jacket? First or second guy? Hunter is the one sitting to my left. He's next. Morgan, who's sitting to Jeanette's left, is on the end. Okay. And uh, going the other direction, um, Terry uh, is, um, is, is Jeanette's right hand. 
Um, so she will, you know, float around everywhere. She's marketing. She does everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's right and she and she she offices in uh, Millersville and will stay there. Um, uh, Deb is going to likely be. Uh, um, so Debbie Hutt it might be a manager here. She's been with me for almost over ten years. There's uh, next to her in the gray is Sandy Marshall. She is my nurse manager, and she's been with me for fifteen years. She will also. Uh, not necessarily be here, but be on hand uh, in any kind of conversation and can also do she, she any lives, kind of medical. She lives next door to the um, Millersville group homes. And one of the reasons Jeanette decided to be there is because Sandy lives, lives next door. Lives right at Stone's throat. So mm -hmm. her, kids work, her kids have worked for me and still one of them does. Um, so I think Morgan's age uh, as a uh, aide and med tech. Uh, night shift, and then there's uh, Lori, who would love to be the chef here, and would be wonderful. <laughs> she um, uh, does all the ordering through Wagner's for me, um, organizes my kitchens, and also works, I think, two days a week uh, for me. But she would probably love to work on this at Banbury for me, and I would probably put her there. As but she can also, I'm I'm not a big home, so she can do what. She needs to do for the Millersville for here too, because I would, bank, I would bulk my orders uh, with Wagner's as need food needed here. Um, yeah, well, Wag Wagner's doesn't provide prepare, prepared food, do they? They provide the materials to make the meals. Yeah, right, well, they do do prepared some. I think Mel would love the guy that uh, has been servicing me for 15 years would love for me to do it, and I've gone to his shows and he, you know his food shows. They're um, yeah, food. I I just want the food good and and serve fresh for uh, the seniors. Um, so uh, Wagner's has done us very well, as I'm sure they've done very well for Gibson Island Club. Um. This is um, the response to uh, the corporation's September twentieth, two thousand twenty email um, that we sent them on the twenty fifth. Um, and uh, some of these questions uh, are so far uh, above and beyond. For example, their questions are in bullet point and italics. Who, the corporation asks, who at ALW2 will determine the necessity for psychiatric evaluations? And the responses that we were, um, they were upset about that we were being vague. We responded, no one in assisted living well, compassionate care too, will make those determinations. Each resident's doctors, nurse, practitioners, or delegating nurses will make those determinations. They ask who will evaluate assessments, physicians' reports, and psychiatric evaluations. We responded again, doctors, nurse practitioners, or delegating nurses. Um, they ask by what standard are assessments, physicians' reports, and psychiatric evaluation to be evaluated? Uh, the response was the standards employed by doctors nurse practitioners or delegating nurses. They asked what are the qualifications of persons uh, who could require a psychiatric evaluation. We responded, the qualifications of doctors, nurse practitioners or delegating nurses. Um, so again, uh, they, they know better than to ask all these questions and they know that we can't give medical care, um, but they continued um, to do that go way outside what um, certainly is in the deeds, 1925 deeds and agreements, uh, and in the HUD uh, DOJ joint statement. Um, they know that the future residents are going to be disabled. That's really all they need to know uh, under the uh, Fair Housing HUD DOJ joint statement uh, from 2016, November 10th. This is from the uh, 2016 uh, November 10th HUD DOJ joint statement. Uh, it says, if a jurisdiction chooses to adopt formal procedures for reasonable accommodation requests, the procedures cannot be onerous or require information beyond what is necessary to show that the individual has a disability and that the requested accommodation is related to that disability. Uh, 
uh, the questions that the corporation asked on August 21st, 2020, and thereafter by email about who would be making medical decisions, um, who would be making medical evaluations when they told us they were aware and their attorneys are certainly aware that assisted livings don't make medical evaluations. They said we weren't willing to uh, answer questions or that um, our, question, our answers were vague. Uh, they weren't vague. Um, we gave them exact answers that it is uh, doctors and nurse practitioners and nurses um, who make um, those medical evaluations and decisions, not assisted livings. No further information was needed. Uh, they did not need to go to the level which they continued to go on the 21st of August and thereafter all the way through October with their questions and then um, put us in a false light that we weren't willing to answer questions. We weren't willing to answer questions um, that went to medical treatment and we actually answered every single one of their questions.